A bomb scare on a flight turns out to just be an adult diaper in the bathroom. A man was arrested for having sex with a stuffed animal in a car. And a man fakes heart attacks to avoid paying bills at over 20 restaurants. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast in existence. I have three weird stories from all over the world. Let's do it. A bomb scare on a flight turns out to just be an adult diaper in the restroom. Well, in a way, it's a bomb. Technically, it's a, it's a stink bomb. <laughs> How about that, guys? Pretty good joke right up top. I promise you they'll get worse. A flight from Panama to Florida was diverted back to its airport on Friday after a suspicious object was found in the bathroom of the plane. And this object was super suspicious. It was mistaken for a bomb. The object turned out to be an adult diaper wrapped in a black plastic bag. <laughs> when Grandpa said he was going to go drop some bombs in the bathroom, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> he didn't mean that kind of bomb, though. He meant a different kind of bomb. It uh, says here, rather than uh, inspect the suspicious object, for some reason, the crew and all 144 passengers aboard the plane had to be completely redirected back to the Panama airport halfway through their trip so that they could get some security to identify the suspicious object. <laughs> Couldn't have just smelled it on the plane been like, nope, it's poop. It's just poop, guys. We can keep going to Florida, which will also smell like poop when we get there. How about I just pass around the diaper so that we can all uh, get prepared to smell exactly what Florida smells like before we arrive? Okay, back to the story. The flight was halfway through the journey when it was diverted back to Panama. The Boeing landed on a secure runway where airport security and the Panama National Police were waiting to board the plane and identify the strange object. Hmm, seems very strange. It smells like poo. It's in the bathroom. Do you think it might be poo, guys? Or what do you... <laughs> This says authorities dispatched the canine units came out. They had to have the canine units, units smell it because they weren't sure that it exactly was poop. They had members of the special forces equipped to disarm explosives. But, but, but the bomb threat turned out to be a false alarm caused by the disposable adult diaper. Now we got a quote here from Jose Castro, head of the airport security team. He's going to tell us about the poop he discovered. Let's hear what he has to say. We had it on a secure runway, everyone, where the police, special explosives, canine units, and special forces examined the object, and we found it to be an adult diaper, ruling out any risk. No risk here. It's just an adult diaper. Well, there's some risk because it was leaky. Very, It was very full diaper. That's why it was placed in a plastic bag. This person... Uh, Left it in the bathroom for some reason. We're not sure why they didn't just put it in the trash receptacle. Perhaps it was too big to fit down there. It was quite a big uh, poop, turns out. Big poop. Yeah. Not a bomb. Big poop. Well, the fallout of all of this is uh, passengers, all 144 of them, were pretty pissed off, I imagine, because they arrived in Florida seven hours too late. And I would be so angry if my flight was diverted because of this stupidity. And I don't understand why there's nobody on the crew that can inspect an object in the bathroom. Like, that just seems like, I don't know, flight 101. <laughs> there's something in the bathroom. I don't know what it is. Could it be a bomb? We don't know. I don't know. Maybe take a look at it. I don't know. Could you just, I don't know. Go take a look at it. Don't you want to know if it's a bomb anyways? Don't you want to see that there's a little timer on there? You know how much time you have? <laughs> maybe if, if it is something, something ticking with a timer and it says you have 22 minutes, maybe somehow you, I don't know, you figure out a way to drop it out of the plane. <laughs> well, then it would land on someone's house and explode. Maybe you could drop it over the ocean. Maybe there's a way around finding a bomb on the plane. But still, I think you need to find out if it is a bomb. In fact, that seems to be the first priority. Like, let's find out what it is. Let's inspect it right there, right then. What, do you not have security clearance to see what a, an object is in the bathroom? <laughs> Maybe make an announcement. Hey, anyone leave a black bag in the bathroom? Anyone? Anyone uh, forgot to throw something away in the bathroom, perhaps? Maybe some old guy will be like, oh, yeah, that was my diaper. It didn't fit down the uh, receptacle, so I just left it there. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I filled it up. You know, I, 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 I do that sometimes. I get nervous for it before a flight, you know? I get nervous. And I did have some tacos this morning. A man is caught having sex with a stuffed animal and is arrested in Arkansas. Weehaw! Arkansas! It's hard to find love in Arkansas, guys. There's not a lot of people living there. 
So sometimes you got to have sex with a stuffed animal. You just got to make sweet love with a stuffed animal. They're very, very soft. They're a lot softer than the people in Arkansas. A 55-year-old Arkansas man, he faces some drug charges. He faces some sexual indecency charges. The deputy spotted him having sex with a stuffed animal. Let's learn what kind of stuffed animal was it. Was that a little teddy bear? Was it? A judge found probable cause to charge Theodore Morgavan III. Theodore Morgavan III, yes. He was uh, charged with possession of a controlled substance, also known as the methamphetamines. He's also charged with furnishing in possession or using prohibited articles. Yes, it doesn't say what these articles are, but they are prohibited articles. He's also charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Let's, uh, let's try and say that again. Drug paraphernalia. He's also charged with public sexual indecency, Theodore Morgavan III. Public sexual indecency with a stuffed animal, I believe. Whose stuffed animal? Did he steal it from a child? That should be another charge. According to the court documents at 12.45 a.m., a Baxter County Sheriff's deputy observed a vehicle at the Midway store. He, the affidavit states that the officer observed the vehicle was rocking uncontrollably. Well, a lot of rocking going on. This guy was really giving it to the stuffed animal. <laughs> Take that stuffed animal. I'm going to give you some loving like you never had. You're going to write about this in your diary tomorrow, baby. Mm. All right. When the deputy took a look inside the vehicle, he reported observing Morgavan the third having sex with a stuffed animal. Oh, this poor deputy. <laughs> Definitely going to have PTSD after you see an Arkansas man having sex with a teddy bear in a car. <laughs> My goodness. Ah, oh, this guy's got therapy in his future. Upon learning that Morgavan had a search waiver on file from a previous charge, it looks like, the deputy then searched the vehicle and found a purse containing two marijuana pipes and a syringe. While being booked into the Baxter County Detention Center, the affidavit stated another deputy found approximately three grams of meth methamphetamines in the purse as well. Now, Theodore Morgavan III appeared in court. He pleaded not guilty to the charges because that's what you're supposed to plead, even if you're caught in the act of the molestation of a stuffed animal with methamphetamines in your pocket. You, you got to say not guilty. Just say not guilty. Just clog up, clog up the court systems. Stay out of the court. Stay out of the jail as, as, as much as you can. As much as you can, guys. So you can just keep on rocking vehicles with your stuffed animal meth nights. And my country's amazing. This is our legal system. Just so, it's so awesome. <laughs> Why are these guys all on the streets? Well, because we have a system where it just allows them to uh, stand up and go not guilty. And then they get to go right back outside, smoke some meth, and, and make love to a plush little Barney animal. <laughs> In the parking lot of the courthouse again. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yay. Want to create a podcast? Spotify's platform lets you easily make, record, distribute a podcast everywhere. Even earn a little bit of money. All in one place, too. For free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. You record and edit on your phone or your computer. You send it to Spotify and everywhere podcasts can be heard. They even have video podcasting options. Spotify for Podcasters allows you to earn money with ads and subscriptions as well. Best of all, it's free. Try it. Download Spotify for Podcasters or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your life, man. A man avoids paying bills at 20 restaurants by faking heart attacks. The article begins by saying... A bill can sometimes sneak up on you at a restaurant after you've had a nice time, a nice meal. Sometimes the bill's a lot higher than you thought. Sometimes you get those menus, they don't even put prices on them. What's it like to order off a menu like that? I have no idea. <laughs> I want to be so wealthy I could just order stuff that doesn't have a price on the menu. <laughs> oh, never mind. Just bring me your best lobster. Sir, it's, it's, it's the market price for lobster. Oh, it doesn't matter. I have third in my last name. <laughs> Bring it. Bring it on, whatever it costs. <laughs> it says one man supposedly got so frightened after seeing his bill in 20 different restaurants that he had heart attacks. Okay, I'm sure. He got frightened, really? This many times? 
This is called fraud. A 50-year-old Lithuanian man was apprehended by the authorities in Spain for this bizarre act of having heart attacks when he gets his bill at restaurants. He is said to have defrauded all of the restaurants. And the bulk of this happened in a place called the Costa Blanca region in Spain. Apparently, the guy would allegedly put on some exaggerated theatrical act after ordering his food and beverages. He would hold his chest and scream and then faint on the floor. Well, pretend to faint on the floor while clutching his chest, you know, acting as though he's having a heart attack. You know, we've all seen it in the movies. Apparently, this heart attack restaurant scam went on for a while until one business owner spotted this individual's performance and began posting images and video of him at other restaurants, advising people not to fall for his heart attack performance. A manager of the El Buen Comer, one of the eateries that the alleged cereal bill skipper hit, was quoted as saying, quote, Well, it was very theatrical. He pretended to faint and then slumped himself down on our floor. We have sent his photo around to all the restaurants to try and stop him from striking again with his heart attack ruse. Eventually, uh, restaurant employees did not fall for the show, and instead of calling an ambulance, they called the police on him. Once law enforcement came, the fake sick man requested medical attention, but he had no idea that the officers had already recognized him from previous run-ins at other restaurants and from photos and videos posted online, and he was subsequently arrested. It says, according to the Spanish media, this 50-year-old man is somewhat notorious among restaurant owners in the area. He was first spotted in November of 2022 and has since become pretty famous for this heart attack routine. He gets away with skipping the bill most of the time, but it doesn't seem to bother him. Even if the police get involved, they say, he always smiles at them when he sees them. They say it's probably because he knows there isn't very much that they can do to stop him, and he doesn't mind spending a night or two in jail before resuming his scamming routine. And because the bills that he tries to skip are relatively small, a few tens of euros, his crimes are considered minor, and the repercussions reflect this. Most of the time, he just spends a night behind bars, which he appears to be okay with. However, after this incident, a number of restaurant owners have decided to team up and file a joint complaint, which could land the man up to two years in jail. Now they say this heart attack scam isn't that uncommon. In 2008, a man from the U.S. was suspected of faking heart attacks in order to avoid paying restaurant bills and cab fees. He was accused of chronic criminal scamming, and he ended up facing nine months in jail and a $10,000 fine. And uh, this story reminds me of a Beastie Boys song that goes a little something like this. Heart attack! Heart attack, man! Time to change your ways, heart attack, man! I'm a caffeine addict, as you know. Many of you have mailed me coffee or bought me coffee, and for that I'm grateful. But I also have the acid reflux, and I can't drink as much coffee as I used to. Instead of having that fifth cup, I drink a little Magic Mind. That's right, Magic Mind. It's an elixir that I just add to my afternoon routine. It's a coffee alternative that gives me energy and increased focus. It's just a little green shot. All right, it's got delicious, healthy ingredients like vitamins B and C and matcha. And for my listeners like me who are coffee addicts like me, but you want a healthy alternative, this helps you cut back on your coffee. Try Magic Mind. Go to magicmind.co slash weirdaf and use my code weirdaf20. That'll get you 20% off a one-time purchase of Magic Mind or 20% off a subscription of Magic Mind. Go to magicmind.co slash weirdaf and use code weirdaf20 and try Magic Mind. Cut down on the caffeine. Cut down on the reflux, man. Hi. Hey, everybody that listens to Weird AF News. Thank you so much for spending a little time with Caffeinated Jonesy today. Appreciate that. Had my magic mind shot right before the recording session. I think we did well today. If this is your first time to the show, uh, we just just do weird news five days a week and on friday we do weird news from florida just letting you know if you'd like to subscribe because you want more of that please do so if you're listening on spotify just hit the like button and um, i'm available on all podcast players and even on youtube so subscribe appreciate that uh if you want to call the show the number 646-450-2012 leave me a little message if you'd like it's nice to hear from my listeners 
I have an email as well if you'd like to send me any weird stories that you come across that you think would be appropriate for the show. The email is funnyjones at gmail.com. You can just email me and say hi, too. That, I love that. That's always nice. Makes me feel good. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show by buying Jonesy a coffee or joining the Patreon, you can do those things by going to the official website of Weird AF News. Oh, you're wondering what that official website of Weird AF News is? Oh, it's so easy. It's just weirdafnews.com. You can join the Patreon, and that's like joining a an additional Weird AF club. I put in extra weird content in there, some personal stuff about myself. So if you're curious and you want more content, content from me that's about me and about the weird news, then join the Patreon. Check it out. All right, enough selling here. Enough selling. It's just so annoying to do such things. Keep asking you to do these things called call to actions. They always tell me to do that. They go, you have to have a call to action at the end of your podcast. You got to tell the listeners to do things. I'm like, why do I got to tell them to do something? They already listened to my podcast. Haven't they done enough? So, well, no, you're not being a very good podcast host if you don't give them the call to action. So there's your call to action, guys. As annoying as it is on every damn episode, I got to do it. <sighs> I love you.